In recent years, like other branches of Iran's armed forces, the Iranian Navy has moved toward the use of smart and unmanned platforms. These platforms operate in aerial, surface, and subsurface domains and are expanding their diversity in missions and operational capabilities each year. In this regard, Admiral Irani, the commander of the Iranian Navy, announced the unveiling of a new class of drones with logistical and transport applications. In this video, we will first discuss why the Iranian military is employing such drones and then examine similar models and the potential features of these drones. According to the commander of the Iranian Navy, these drones are designed specifically for maritime use and can transport heavy cargo from various points at sea and along the coast to ships. Additionally, in emergency situations, these drones are even capable of carrying personnel. Apart from that, they are also capable of transporting medicine and blood. As for the reason why the Iranian Navy is moving toward such drones, it should be noted that with the expansion of its presence in the oceans and the formation of an oceanic command, there is a need to maintain continuous communication lines with these regions. According to Admiral Irani, in the future, Iran will have various floating platforms in the oceans, which will remain stationed in those areas with periodic crew rotations. Naturally, this situation requires specific logistical arrangements. For example, in the field of food supply, the Iranian Navy, in collaboration with knowledge-based companies, is moving toward technologies for long-term food preservation. Additionally, with the help of these companies, they have developed modern systems for cultivating fresh produce, such as vegetables, on board ships. However, considering that it is not feasible for a vessel to transport everything from the shore to the ocean, it becomes evident that there is a need for a tool capable of establishing a communication line spanning several hundred kilometers between land and vessels. This can be achieved using helicopters or other ships, though each has its drawbacks. For example, the speed of a piston engine drone reaches up to 200 kilometers per hour, whereas ships are significantly slower. Moreover, this speed advantage is only valid when the sea conditions are stable. If turboprop drones are used, the speed will be considerably higher. It is also important to mention that not every vessel is capable of oceanic navigation. It requires high tonnage ships and a well-trained crew to endure the challenging conditions of the ocean. This clearly demonstrates that ships cannot be relied upon for frequent and urgent transport operations. In the field of helicopters, there are also numerous safety and weather-related limitations. Additionally, every several hundred kilometer flight causes significant wear and tear on the helicopter, imposing high maintenance costs on the force. This is aside from the safety risks and the expense of each flight sortie. For the reasons mentioned, there is a need for a platform that can deliver sensitive cargo to ships at any time with low costs. These cargo items could include specialized medicine, or even parts required for ship repairs that are not available on board. As for the drone itself, considering its ability to transport sensitive cargo and even personnel to ships, three potential configurations can be envisioned. In the first scenario, it could be a heavy vertical takeoff and landing. VTOL drone capable of landing and taking off on a ship's helicopter pad. Generally, VTOL drones are small and cannot carry loads heavier than 100 kilograms. However, in recent years, some larger models have been developed. Last year, the Sukhoi company unveiled a VTOL transport drone capable of carrying 300 kilograms of cargo over a distance of 500 kilometers. This drone uses eight electric motors for vertical takeoff and landing and a piston or turboprop engine for horizontal flight. This model could serve as a blueprint for designing drones capable of taking off from the decks of Iranian Navy and IRGC vessels. The next example is the Starling Jet, an electric VTOL aircraft produced by an Iranian-British company. In recent years, a half-scale version of this fully electric aircraft was built and underwent some test flights. This version had the capacity to carry either a pilot or 50 to 100 kilograms of cargo. The company is registered in Iran as a knowledge-based firm. The aircraft was supposed to be unveiled in Iran during the final days of Serena Satari's tenure as Vice President for Science and Technology. But for unknown reasons, this did not happen. Currently, the drone version of this aircraft is in the process of obtaining flight certifications in Europe and is intended for use as an electric cargo drone. 
Since military applications are not restricted by environmental regulations, equipping this drone with a turboprop or piston engine could significantly enhance its flight performance. The next category involves amphibious planes and drones. These types of aircraft are capable of landing and taking off on both water and land. In the field of heavy drone development, converting manned aircraft into drones is a common practice worldwide, as it reduces research and development costs and lowers project risks. An example of such a drone is the Chinese U-650, which is an unmanned version of a single-seat Spanish amphibious aircraft. Like its manned counterpart, this drone uses a Rotax 912 engine, which is also widely used in Iranian drones. The U-650 amphibious drone is made of carbon fiber and has an endurance of 15 hours. Its maximum range reaches 2,000 kilometers. In the unmanned version, the pilot's cabin has been converted into a cargo compartment, but it still retains enough space to carry one person. Based on Admiral Irani's comments regarding the Iranian Navy drone's ability to carry personnel, it is likely that the Iranian drone will have a similar configuration. In other words, by converting a manned aircraft into an unmanned one, Iran may produce a drone whose cargo compartment still has the capacity to carry a person. In Iran, the Dorna Aerospace Company had previously developed an amphibious aircraft for the IRGC Navy. This amphibious aircraft, equipped with a 250 horsepower engine, had the capacity to carry six passengers and would be a suitable platform for conversion into an amphibious transport drone. The third possibility for this drone is the development of a seaplane. Unlike amphibious planes, seaplanes cannot land or take off on land as they are not equipped with wheeled landing gear. These aircraft equipped with specialized gear can take off from coastal waters and ports and transport cargo or personnel to locations such as offshore oil platforms or ships. Since Admiral Irani did not mention the drone's ability to take off or land on land, the most probable scenario is the construction of a seaplane drone, which is less complex compared to VTOL and amphibious aircraft. Previously, the IRGC Navy had also worked on amphibious drones, and during a 2023 armament induction ceremony, two small amphibious drones were displayed. Recently, General Nasser Zada, Iran's Minister of Defense, announced the development of drones capable of taking off and landing on water, which could potentially be the same drone the Iranian Navy has in mind. Ultimately, considering the Iranian Army and IRGC Navy's policy of maintaining a presence in international waters, these drones represent a piece of the broader puzzle aimed at providing logistical support in the oceans. This puzzle has already partially taken shape with the conversion of oil tankers into support ships, such as the Makran and Shahid Madavi. Iran's push for water landing drones signal a new chapter in its naval logistics and warfare. With their long-range and multi-purpose capabilities, these UAVs could significantly boost Iran's presence in international waters. But will these drones give Iran a real tactical advantage? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more in-depth military analysis. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.